Hello everyone, my name is SJ. I'm a certified crystal healer and shamanic earth medicine practitioner. And this is our Ask Me Anything. There were quite a few submissions ahead of this, so we have a few questions to get to. But don't hesitate to drop any other questions that you have in here live. Feel free to do that. And also, if you if anything comes up for you on replay, I don't want you to ever hesitate asking me on replay as well. So if you're watching on replay just in the chat, go ahead and drop any messages there too that you may have. And then let me get these pulled up and we will begin. When you guys jump in, go ahead and say hello. Let me know that you can see and hear. Let me know where you're watching from. And let me see here because I think a question might have been submitted here into the chat. Let me snag this question. Also, how is everyone feeling right now? What has been coming up for you this week? I'm always interested to see what energies everyone is kind of experiencing as well. So let me know, how has this week gone for you? And perhaps I can provide some support there if it has not been easy peasy, right? Sometimes it's not always easy and can take a bit of effort to move through, but certainly through crystal healing, shamanic earth medicine, there's always a way to move through those energies. And I think we're going here. Just want to drop this into crystalline. Here we go. And also, if you guys feel drawn to share, please do. I appreciate sending the messages out far and wide so that everyone can benefit from this amazing community. And any questions that come in, whether they're yours or someone else's, they will absolutely benefit anyone else who taps into this energy and has the moment to really kind of see how they connect in with the collective and how those energies really are working together for all of us. Like we all experience a lot of the same things. And I think we don't even realize that sometimes as well. So first question that was submitted, is there an energetic reason why things like car accidents or identity theft continually happen to people? And I would say, yes, there are energetic patterns that can predispose us to have certain things continually happen to us. So like car accidents or like the identity theft. Uh, I mean, relationships are a great example, too, where we attract the same kind of energy from our partners that maybe are not super beneficial or serving for us. So, yes, there can be an energetic underlying component. Typically, you will find those kinds of energies come up due to past life issues, possibly childhood trauma and ancestral work. So it's different for everyone. So there's not going to be one specific energy that causes you to experience car accidents or identity theft, but it's more than likely something from a past life or ancestral that that energy is kind of coming back around for you to kind of re-experience it and hopefully relieve whatever strain or trauma there was uh, previously. Next one, how do I decide what to work for people? This is a really interesting one and thank you so much who, for whoever submitted this question. Uh, when deciding what to work, so there's two routes that happen when people come to me. One, they know exactly what they're coming to me for. So I have a lot of people come to me for genetic conditions and looking for relief from a lot of those symptoms. So if they're coming to me for a specific genetic concern like bipolarism, genetic paranoia, hemochromatosis, there's a lot, right? ADHD, ADD. Uh, those are all things that I have worked patterns on. There's more to um, MS is another one. They know exactly what they're looking for relief on. We do always check to make sure that that is coming up for them for priority. Like this is the priority thing that we need to be working though. And if they are ready to move through those energies, I've never seen it not be priority either. So we know exactly what we're going into in those sessions when you come to me with those very specific genetic issues. Um, and one thing on the genetic issues or concerns topic, we can't change our DNA, right? Our DNA is our DNA, but we can absolutely shift the way that it expresses itself within our lives. So the symptoms and things like that, we can work through to find relief for a lot of those things. Um, 
Most of those for me happen through crystal healing. There are shamanic journeying techniques though too to come in for those. Second route, right? People come to me and they just know that something's off. So they just want something to have a relief from. And in that moment, I'm going to look at your being at all three levels, uh, physical, emotional, and the soul level. And we're going to find what the priority is to work through each of those levels. Sometimes those levels are all in harmony of what the priority is. And sometimes there is one of those layers that will take precedence over the others that we need to work. Um, there's also an emotional reason for a physical reason. So I don't know that I've ever seen the physical body hit as the priority for us to focus on. Typically spiritual and emotional uh, relief is where we're going to look even to relieve a physical uh, concern. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense to you. But it's really going into all three levels of the being and then finding the priority that way um, to work for them. So those are the two routes. Next one, what is my most used crystal? Um, I would say because the vast majority of my work is around genetic concerns, Numite. Numite will be in every single one of my genetic works. So that one is going to come in. Second for that will also be a Phenakite. Phenakite is another one that will be in all of my genetic workings too. So you're going to see both of those. Um, if you're coming to me specifically for genetic concerns that we're trying to alleviate stressors on. For me personally, I find myself using Amazonite with Phenakite a lot, and I also use Ocean Jasper for myself a ton, along with Indicolite Tourmaline. Those are my three most used for myself. Amanda, welcome. Chelsea, I see you here too. Sherry, welcome. Thank you all for being here with me. Uh, you don't, you didn't have to submit your questions ahead of time. It just may, ensures that we get to them because there were quite a few that were submitted. But if you have any questions, doesn't matter what it is, ask me and we will try to get to them tonight. So that is what tonight is for. Let's see. What next question is, what is one of the most powerful things a shamanic journey can achieve? Oh, shamanic journeys can achieve so much. Um, I would say... One of the most powerful shamanic journeys is to find out your dominant processing center. So even if you are not really into your psychic gifts, which I know many of you here are, so this is going to ring a little bit differently for each of those populations. But if you are not really into your psychic gifts, you're still, if you find where you dominantly process information and react based upon that processing system, you can really shift the way that you respond to those external stressors of the world. From a psychic standpoint, when you figure out what your dominant processing center is and you activate it and start really working those inner and outer wheels of that specific chakra center, you will find that it is much easier to tap into your psychic gifts consistently and also effectively. Uh, so I would say that is probably one of the most powerful journeys is to find and activate your dominant processing center or chakra. Um, the next one, gosh, there's so much you can achieve with shamanic journey. I mean, even like the genetic concerns, you can do journeys to relieve that. You can do psychopomp work where you're helping those cross over. Lots of mediums use journeys uh, to talk in that middle world with any of the spirits that they're coming into. There's just so much with shamanic journeying that, I mean, really when you think about it, it's almost a guided meditation to get to different layers. So you can really achieve anything that you want to with shamanic journey. You just need to find the right journey and the right uh, plane to visit. So there's a lot to go into with that one. Uh, let's see. Next question is, let's see, where did it go? Is it possible to experience certain ailments when being around specific people? Yes, it is. You can pick up energies from other people and it's going to always be associated to a lack of your boundaries. So when your boundaries are not firmly in place at all four of those layers, then you can absolutely pick up certain physical stressors, maybe even emotional ones too, from the people that you are around. 
But if you reinforce your four layers of your boundaries, you won't have that issue. So really the boundary work is what you're going to want to focus on if you're experiencing that. Uh, because when our boundaries and our auric field are firmly in place, you're not going to see that being something that you typically um, experience. Does that make sense? Um, I think who asked this is actually on. Can't remember because I combined them all together. Um, I do want to say though that genetic concerns will come into play with this. Genetic conditions often blow out our auric fields um, or keep them so that they're not up all of the time due to the nervous system effect that they typically have as well. So if you do have a genetic condition, you would want to supplement medication or work through it from an energetic standpoint, one of those options to support it to ensure that you're not blowing out your auric field. Um, especially with children, this is one of the first signs that you can also kind of see that perhaps there could be an underlying genetic component that we would want to take a look at and work if you do notice that your kids are experiencing certain ailments coming up when somebody is around. Or you would want to do, to support it, do that selenite cleansing and sweeping to reseal that auric field uh, for your kids as well just to really support that possibility that the boundaries or the auric field are not staying up at all times. Amanda, yes, I am also a shamanic journeying practitioner, earth medicine practitioner, so journeys is part of my work, yes. That is something that I am very passionate about as well. Karen, welcome, happy to have you here within the group. You're new to crystals. You have a job interview tomorrow via phone. Is there a crystal I should have around? New but have a chakra set. Yes. So because you are doing it through a phone, we would want to support the technology as well as your own communication and the ability for the other person to receive your message. So we're going to be working with three crystals to support that. First one is Shungite. That will support the communication to ensure that the phone, you don't have any technological issues come up. So Shungai is the first one to support your communication and make sure that it's coming out very clearly. I like Laramar or Celestite. So either one of those, if you have them. Blue Lace Agate is another pretty common one that shows up in chakra sets. Any of those three would be fine to support your ability to deliver vocally what you need to say. And then for them to tap in and feel your message and to really jive really with your energies, I would look at Colorado Amazonite or Ocean Jasper. Those three crystals together will probably ensure that that job interview is a success for you. Uh, Chelsea, you've been experiencing this with G when visitors come. Yeah, so Chelsea, I would look at that to see if there are muscle test or pendulum to see if there's any underlying genetic conditions coming up or if we just need to enforce or reinforce his energetic boundaries at all four layers and the auric field. So just kind of go through those three questions. I know you have a lot of tools in your toolkit too, Chelsea, but those would be the three things that I would look at. Um, in the Stronger Together membership site, there are two videos on reinforcing boundaries. So those will be absolutely amazing to pull in those boundaries just to ensure that that energy is coming together and really sitting in that nice space where he's supported fully as a being too. And next question. Um, things that I want to know but can't form a question for, how do I discover them? So when there's kind of that monkey mind, right, you can't quite get to exactly what it is that you are, you know something's off, but you can't name it. I would say first, I know you're a head point, Chelsea, if you guys don't know what that means, check out Janessa with Fiercely Radiant Soul and her Enneagram work. But if you are a head point, like Ch I know Chelsea is, <coughs> We get stuck in our heads to where we want to name everything. We want to find the logic in everything. We want to know everything. I would say if you find yourself often unable to form a question to what you're trying to work, then spirit is telling you to tap into the feeling behind it more so than the knowing. So I would work with something like Ocean Jasper or Amazonite to get drop back into your heart center. And that is another thing that I want to express as well, is that when you are trying to find an answer, especially spiritually, you don't do that from the headspace. You need to drop down into your heart center. 
So once you're sitting in that heart center, kind of visualize that energy coming in through your back, processing in the center of your heart, and then allow the expression of it to come out the front. So the information though is going to come from the center, the inner wheel of that heart chakra. So when you're really trying to find an answer or a question to ask even, sure you're going to think that question in your head or you're going to be thinking about what it is that you want to work. Just send that energy down into your heart though and try to allow it to process within your heart space rather than your head space. Stay out of that crown and third eye space when you're really trying to get uh, questions or answers that aren't flowing to you freely. It's more about hitting that heart space center than it is trying to logically work through them. So that should really help with trying to find those things. <laughs> yes, if you had a different question, reword it for me and I will certainly ask it. But yes, I was very drawn to answer in that manner. Next question is how to astral project. This is a good one, right? Because this is one of those things that lots of people... Um, want to be able to do, right? Astral projection, clairvoyance, those are kind of a lot of the fancy terms that we always want. Uh, the one thing with astral projection that I will say is that fear um, and fear of death specifically will prevent you from being able to astral project because the one thing you're going to learn when you astral project is that you still have consciousness without the physical body. So if you have past life trauma, ancestral trauma, even childhood trauma, where you genuinely have this fear of death, astral projection is probably not going to be something that is easily achieved for you. So we would want to work that fear of death and those limiting beliefs, that trauma response surrounding that in order for you to get to that space of astral projection. Um, also, astral projection will naturally trigger past life, generational, ancestral, or childhood traumas. So oftentimes the psyche will lock those memories away into a nice little box in a cupboard and kind of try to pretend like it threw away the key. Well, the box is always there and the box can always be opened at any time. Astral projection will trigger that box to be opened. So if your psyche or your being knows you're not ready to tap into that Pandora's box, it's probably not going to allow you to astral project. Astral projection is that pure, straight, 100% consciousness. You leave the physical body and you're 100% in your collective consciousness, their soul, that spirit energy. So anything that is locked within the soul or the spirit, including traumas, will come to the forefront when you try to astral project. So those are all things that we would want to clean up if you're finding it difficult for you to astral project and that's something that you want. Um, if you have more questions on astral projection, though, drop them in the chat and I can certainly elaborate more. Uh, Alexis, welcome. Happy to see you here as well. Uh, astral projection is another one of those that through shamanic journeying, you can certainly start to flex that muscle a bit just by doing the journeys to like the middle world, um, trying to get into, cause the middle world is still present time. So from a shamanic journey standpoint, when you journey to the middle world, everything that is presently true is still going to be within the middle world. So when you're thinking about astral projection, traveling to the middle world is a form of astral projection. It's just going to have a different expression of that skill. So like remote viewing and things like that, that you'll hear people talk about, that's really happening in the middle world. Um, that is where they are really seeing that energy come into place. Um, and if this will scroll, let's see. Uh, what is the next question? Uh, okay, so we did astral projection. Best ways to release energy blocks on your own. Well, the discovery process. So the discovery of what is actually going on is going to be the first way to release blockages. Uh, Desert Rose Selenite is something that I use whenever I am trying to remove a blockage. So from a crystal healing standpoint, you would want to have the Desert Rose Selenite in your arsenal. Um, 
I actually prefer shamanic journeys though when I am looking at blockages or discovering them. So I think that's one thing that is not really known about a lot of my work. When I'm doing crystal healing, I'm journeying at the same time as I'm doing your crystal layouts. And that's how I really discover the information that comes in and know exactly which places to support and which blockages to remove is I'm quite literally journeying throughout your body to see exactly where that stack stagnant or destructive energy lies and then we're pulling it out through the journey process as well as facilitating the work with the crystals. So I think that's something that maybe is little known about how I go about crystal healing and shamanic journey. They're never two separate things for me and they never have been. It has always been a process between the two where I've married the two energies to get the information. On your own, I really like, um, let me see if I have one sitting here. I really like the, I do, for blockage removal too, because our auric field is going to be the first place that we notice there's a problem because it's our external energetic barrier. So I really like the natural aura quartz. This is a big one. I really like the natural aura quartz. Um, to work with because when you're working with that, it's going to reinforce your auric field and your boundary layers all at the same time. So that will help with removing out any of the damage or blockages that could be within the auric field. And oftentimes when you heal the boundary issues or the auric field problems, you are also going to see that the physical, emotional, and relational boundaries are also going to come into harmony, and that's going to include within the physical body and the emotional body, too. So if you guys have been following a little bit, you know that the energetic layers or boundaries that we work with, or that I work with for my modality, is the physical, the emotional, the relational, and the spiritual boundaries. The spiritual is going to be your outermost layer, so that auric, the natural aura quartz, is going to work on that field first, moving inward. Um, that's a really great one. And by working with crystals, I know there's been quite a few lives that I've done on how to work with crystals, but honestly, sleep with it. Put it in your bedroom, sleep next to it. That is the best way to really ingest those crystal healing energies that is practical. Uh, it doesn't have to be some elaborate process or layout or anything like that. I also really believe that spirit will come in and do for you whatever needs to be done. So reaching out to that higher self, your ancestors, angels, and spirit guides, that's going to be a way that you can really tap into that energy and ask for assistance so that you're supported through it um, by others, but still on your own, right? Because you're seeking that out all by yourself. So let's see, next one. What are my morning and nightly rituals like? My routine, I think I've said this on the last Ask Me Anything as well. Routine is the most important thing for me. So it's le it's a ritual, sure, but it's my routine. So just like I brush my teeth every single morning, I'm absolutely going to sit with a crystal in the morning and meditate and make sure that I am prepared for the day. I also like to really ask what my priority for today is uh, energetically. What am I doing with my life today? I do like to do the um, light column activation as soon as I wake up, just to make sure that I'm connected to both the earth and source energy all at once. I find myself meditating kind of midday, uh, just sitting in the energies of the day to see where, where maybe I could do some work or what's been brought to my awareness that I've kind of missed. And then at night, I'm always going to do the return to me, the energy prayer, which I have shared with all of you lovelies too. And then you're going to see me typically do the auric field cleanse and seal with the selenite. I always sleep with a crystal. So I suppose that would be the end of my routine is selecting the crystal that I'm going to work with. Whatever crystal I am sleeping with or meditating with throughout the day, it will be the same one for at least three days. Um, typically five, three to five days. I won't swap out crystals until then so that my body has time to really come into harmony with that specific crystal energy and that I'm not going to have, you know, a little bit of crystal whiplash sometimes. If you go from something like carnelian, which is very energetic and uplifting to something like a blue lace agate, you might get a little bit of energetic whiplash of, oh, I've got an upper and then a downer. 
So just making sure that you are cognizant uh, and feeling into that energy when you're selecting your crystals. I also always say though, if you just listen to your intuition, you're never gonna go wrong. Yourself, your higher self knows which crystal you need to work with or what journey you need to do or what you need to meditate on. But I guess the moral of this story for me is create that routine and stick to it. Because once it becomes that routine, just like that post I shared, you just move through those levels to where it truly just becomes who you are. It's what you do, it's what you embody, and it's what you display to the world because it's truly, truly you. Uh, so establishing that routine is super important. Oh, best crystals for Mercury conjunct Saturn. Well, so when Mercury conjuncts Saturn, it brings a ton of critical thinking into place where we're literally wanting to figure out everything. We want really, we want to dive into really serious and challenging mental thoughts and work. Like we're kind of seeking out those challenges. But when we're doing that, you may also experience I don't like the word failures, but lack of success with some of those projects you're taking on or the intellectual trying to figure it out energy. And when that happens, sometimes you can really get into a space of a little bit of depression or negative thinking, overthinking, where you're kind of just running the rabbit hole. So some of that can come into place with the Mercury conjunct Saturn to where if you hit that low, you may also really start to have communication issues with those you loved or those around you. And then a lot of those harsh and critical words can really kind of come up to where you almost withdraw into that coldness and isolation to where you just don't want to experience it. So if that is what you are experiencing and that's what you're looking to have assistance navigating through, finding the priority of what it is you need to figure out is going to be important. That would be the first thing that I would look into is see if you can find your priority and then work with just that prioritized energy. And then with that, if you are kind of experiencing some of that mental brain drain, I would go to things like rhodonite, rhodochrosite, the smoky Congo citrines. These are amazing. They'll bring back that joyfulness, but also the grounded energy to where you're going to feel very stabilized and supported, which is going to decrease out a lot of that like depressive or sadness energy that can come in when you feel overwhelmed. So those smoky Congo citrines are amazing. I like the Congo citrine for this work too because oh, Saturn, I mean, Mercury conjunct Saturn is really focused on relationships and a lot of familial relationships or those relationships that you are very invested in. Uh, and the Congo citrine taps into that type of energy too. So I like citrine, but for specifically Mercury conjunct Saturn energy, I like the Congo smoky citrine better than any of the Brazilian or Uruguayan or any of the other locales of citrine that you can get. I also really love watermelon tourmaline with lapidolite. Lapidolite's going to calm down a lot of that depressive energy, but watermelon tourmaline is going to make sure that you're staying in your heart space and really open to receive information and give it from your heart space too, rather than your head space. Uh, for me, with that Mercury conjunct Saturn, I feel like we need to get out of our heads, even though that's where we're directed to be. So if you feel that conflict coming up, Dropping back into that heart space rather than your head space is really going to be what you need to do. Uh, and with doing that, the watermelon tourmaline will support that really beautifully, along with the lapidolite, making sure that you're centered and not, not almost in like a manic stage. Because when I think of the energies between Mercury conjunct Saturn, it lulls in between that manic stage versus the low lows of depression. And you kind of get that spiritual whiplash uh, from that energy. Uh, so when we're doing that, the watermelon tourmaline with lapidolite, also epido, natural epido is going to be fantastic uh, for that energy too. So those I would say are going to be my three main ones is the smoky Congo citrine, the watermelon tourmaline with lapidolite and epido. Those will be the three that I think will be able to support you through this the most. If you do feel like you're hitting those manic stages and the low lows of like the depressive energy that comes in with it too. Uh, if you're just needing that 
prioritization, then go to the rotocrosite or the road knight. Those two will support that energy really, really nicely. Uh, Chelsea, do you have any smoky Congo citrine? I do. Uh, or watermelon tourmaline. I think I have both. I know I have a really large watermelon tourmaline, but I think I have smaller ones as well that just came in. So certainly I think those are both available. And let's see, crystals to encourage healthy communication and interactions with others. I love this question because it depends. It depends on what your communication barriers are and why you have them. So probably if you Google search this, you're going to come up with a whole bunch of like blue stones, right? Like you're going to come up with anything associated to the throat chakra. Our communication issues don't originate in the throat chakra. That's just how we express the dysfunction. So that's something that I really want you to take home from this question. So I'm just going to repeat the question. Crystals to encourage healthy communications and interactions with others. The throat chakra is the expression of the energy. It is not the root cause of the energy, though. It is just how the dysfunction is expressed or lack of dysfunction. It can also be how harmony is expressed, but it's the expression and it's not the root cause. So if you are having communication issues or interactions with others, I don't go towards blue stones um, to ever support that work because it's never going to be the originating chakra that is the problem. And I like to treat the root cause rather than just mask the symptoms. And I feel like when we move to just supporting the throat chakra when there's communication issues, we're masking symptoms nothing more than that. Um, one caveat to that is there are many stones that grow together with blue stones. So if you are looking at something like diopside with chrysocolla, that is a beautiful combination to support communication issues if there is a concern with the heart chakra. So if somebody, and what do I mean by that, right? Because that's kind of out there. If you feel like you're walled off, like you throw up boundaries to people about uh, those heart walls and that lack of openness, the diopside with the chrysocolla is going to be absolutely beautiful um, energies for you to pull from to make sure that you are treating the root cause. If you think that generational issues or ancestral concerns could be part of the problem to your communication issues or interactions, then I would go to something like a bloodstone or dravite to support the root and the sacral area, more of those ancestral things. So it's kind of a loaded question because it truly does depend on what the underlying root cause is. So there can be many different reasons for that. Um, I would recommend that you muscle test or pendulum to see which chakra system, so root, sacral, solar, heart, throat, third eye, um, or crown, which one of those is the priority or the root cause for the communication and interaction dysfunction with X person. Once you have that information, then we could go from there on what exactly to support. Um, if I'm just going to move up the chakra system with some general recommendations for the root, dravite, for the sacral, bloodstone, for the solar plexus, I like ocean jasper that is green and yellow. Um, the Congo citrine for sure could follow the solar plexus as well. From the heart chakra, Colorado Amazonite, hands down. If the throat chakra is something that, like, if you have a lot of anger and we need to get through the anger layer before we can get to the root cause, then I would say aquamarine is a great support to get through that anger barrier or that energy. Um, from a third eye standpoint, I really, really like watermelon tourmaline with lapidolite again, just because it's going to keep that mind connected to the heart. Uh, from a crown chakra standpoint, I like celestite. I also really like lithium quartz. I like Herkimer diamonds. I like moldavite um, for the crown as well. If you find that the root cause is the crown chakra, if that's what's coming up for you, I would say we're probably dealing with pi past life issues. Typically, if the crown is the priority for a relational communication or interaction issue, it's a past life issue, and we're going to see that display itself at the crown chakra. So just a little bit more info on that. Next one. 
Can putting an activated crystal grid on a selenite plate clear the intentions or would it keep it charged? So for me, selenite is not charging, it is cleansing. So they're amazing to have on your grids for the center stone because what it does is it ensures that that center stone, any gunk that the center stone picks up, it's going to be transferred from the center stone into the cell, into the selenite, excuse me. So it's not going to clear out your intentions. It's going to keep that center stone functioning, functioning optimally for a longer period of time. Now, I'm not a follower of the selenite never has to be cleansed. I mean, it's a stone, so even scientifically, it can come out of resonance and harmony just like any other stone. It just doesn't do it as quickly as the other stones. Kyanite is another one that holds its... Um, optimal state of resonance so so much longer than any of the other crystals those two really do kind of hold their own in that energetic standpoint so you would want to use them to support your center stone in your grid but it's not going to amplify the energy within the grid does that make sense Chelsea because I think this was your submission as well um, I love them though for center grids just because they do pull off any stagnation that the center stone is picking up. So it does ensure that your grid is going to stay functioning for you longer. I would say though, I would still never ever go longer than two weeks without reactivating a grid. That's kind of my max tap out time if we wanna make sure that it's still functioning optimally. Uh, two weeks is kind of my running factor for grids and them needing assistance and then last question that was submitted how to set boundaries with spirits in the home after setting boundaries already on top of the grid it's not about setting boundaries with the home it's about setting the boundaries for you so you need to ensure that your energetic boundaries at all layers and specifically the relational and the spiritual boundaries are 100 percent intact and you need to do that for everyone within your home because here's the thing right spirits are here spirits live in this plane just like we do so asking them to fully remove themselves from this plane is probably not something that we are capable of but we can set boundaries energetic boundaries around ourselves of how they are allowed to interact with us we don't have to allow interactions that we aren't open to or that we don't want so when we do that i like the home grids because it amplifies your energetic boundary intentions of yourself and the inhabitants of your home but you want to make sure that your own specific boundaries all four of those layers match the intention of your grid and that it is staying up 100 percent of the time so hopefully that makes sense but it really is about the energetic boundaries and your grid is amplifying the intention of those energetic boundaries as well um now with your own personal space especially if you are like me and you work from home so you are consistently tapping into energies of you know that are higher right they're just higher vibrations i don't do mediumship work but certainly during shamanic journeys um those who have passed absolutely come in i do a lot of ancestral work though which i mean my ancestors are past too um so if you're doing that kind of work within your home you have to make sure that you are opening that energy to receive it when you want to and then you are closing the door when you are done with it and that again is the boundary so you open to receive information but then you close that door when you're done um and i see your comment g has been seeing a man in his room nightly that could be an expression of his own clairvoyance so we would want to work with him to have him ask his higher self to ensure that, and you can do this with him, like you can set this intention. Um, I had to do this with Scarlett as well. Uh, she started seeing those who have passed, some of which were our ancestors. So talking to her about who they were, letting her know, you know, that they're here to help. But it was that conversation. And then we set the energetic boundary that she is not currently at a stage where she is open to receive these types of interactions. So we are closing that door. And when she is ready to open that door, I will teach her how to open that door then. But she's just not ready for that right now. 
So Chelsea, that's what I would say. I'm not getting bad energy off of this man that he's seeing in his room nightly. I actually feel like it's an ancestral from dad's side that's coming in. So from a psychic hit standpoint, I don't think you have anything to worry here for like negative things coming in, but you need to have him close that energetic door, that boundary, because he's not ready to receive these messages right now. Uh, and when you do that, I think you will really see this kind of go away for him because that's the great thing about spirit, right? Like it truly does listen. We just have to be able to send that energy or even vocalize it in a manner that spirit can receive so that they know how we want to receive our messages when we want to receive them and when we are not open to receive them. Um, certainly setting that boundary with Scarlett. I, she's never had those interactions again. So I, that's where I would start. Um, from a crystal standpoint to support boundary work, I again, I really, really like Numite. Um, Numite is one that is fabulous. I also, from a protective stone, I like Smoky Quartz with Spessartine Garnet. Um, that will just help reinforce those boundaries. And again, I mean, I sound like a broken record on this, but natural aura quartz just to enforce his auric field boundaries of what's okay and what's not okay is really, really going to help from that standpoint too. So those are all things that I would look at. Uh, Chelsea, we've set boundaries, but this is not something we have done yet. Yeah, so try that. Let me know how that goes. That work went really, really well for uh, Scarlett. So I don't see why it wouldn't work for you as well. And G is certainly older than Scarlett. So he's definitely old enough to be able to feel that energy and tap into it too. So I bet that will be truly life changing for him to have that support. And with that, that was the last of the questions that were submitted to me prior to the live. So I'll give you just a few moments. Anything else that has triggered your interest, sparked questions, definitely drop it in the chat and I'm happy to get to them. Oh, I'm wearing it too. Labradorite, Chelsea is another one. I knew there was a third one that I was thinking about. Look at Labradorites too for him. That will also help with those uh, spiritual energetic boundaries and making sure that it's almost like a mirroring effect. I mean, you can kind of see it in the light, right? It'll just send energies back to whence they came when we're not open to receive them. So Labradorite is really, really good at making sure that we don't receive things that we don't want. Psychically, protective-wise, Labradorite is one of the best protection stones for psychics. Uh, so look at that too. And I think you have Labradorite too. If not, it's super easy to find. But that is one that I would look at for him too. It's definitely gentle enough for children to sleep with. Uh, each of my kids have one at the top of their beds. So certainly look at that too. And with that, I don't know that I'm seeing any other questions. Um, next week I will do Magical Monday. So that's where we do the card readings, pendulum questions. You can ask me anything and we will get information from your higher self, your spirit guides, ancestors, angels, and source energy. So join me Monday at 7 p.m. That definitely is something that I like to offer to the group and I enjoy doing and tapping into that energy with you as well. And then Thursday will be our Stronger Together connection call. So I want to make sure that you guys, if you are open, if you like this setting, the Stronger Together connection call is let's actually work this energy. So we have all of those questions that we want answered. And typically it's because we need to have relief from those things that are plaguing us in our everyday lives. So if you find yourself having disharmony within your relationships or just not being able to find the words to say or express in a manner that that you want to because sometimes we say things in anger that we don't really mean. So if you find some of those patterns coming up that are bothering you, even from a physical standpoint, like if you get sick every single first week of April on your birthday, you always catch the flu or a cold or something. If you can see those tangible patterns happening in your life, what that Stronger Together Connection call is, is to help relieve you on those calls from those specific things. We really want that individualized feedback of what those subscribers need support in, and that's what we deliver on those Thursday calls. So we're not just answering the questions from a cognitive standpoint, 
point, we're helping you work through those patterns so that you don't have to be sick every April 1st. Um, so certainly if you're interested in joining that, I will drop the link for the membership there. But I would say like the best way for me to describe it is it's like these calls that you get from us, but amplified by 100. So you really get that community support in what you're needing in that specific time and space. Also, Janessa and I have our holistic allergy workshop coming up on April 30th. So take a look at the events. You can find it here in Stronger Together. You're not going to want to miss out on that. And the investment for that workshop is only $39. So, I mean, seriously, less than two packages of Claritin and you can find relief or hopefully find relief from your um, allergy symptoms that come up too. You'll also get our energetic take on what allergies are. And when you have that true understanding of what they are, it's so much simpler to work through those patterns and then relieve yourself from that too. So don't miss out on that April 30th call if allergies is something that you suffer from that you would like to experience relief from. Uh, with that, I will also have crystals available for you to um, grab those and be able to use the same crystals that I will use through the grid to help relieve allergies to have support for you if a new allergy seems to rear its ugly head. So lots of lots of options. Make sure you're keeping up on the events and sign up through the Thinkific platform for the free previews. And then you will be on our email distro. So any new courses or workshops that come out, just like that allergy workshop, you will be the first to know. And you will have access to that because oftentimes we'll have to limit the space. The allergy workshop is offered both virtually and in person at Emerald Healing Arts and Apothecaries. So take a look at that and make sure you're jumping into that if that's something that you are drawn to. Janessa, you'll for sure leave the Stronger Together calls with a better connection with yourself and all of your relationships will benefit. Powerful stuff. Yes. And Janessa dropped the link to jump into that call. So thank you. And Chelsea says very powerful, amplified by a million. Thank you, Chelsea. I appreciate you being part of our community so that we always have the chance to work together. So with that, I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your Thursday night. And I can't wait to see you on Monday. And each of you lovelies that will join us on that connection call, I can't wait. I feel like this energy in April is truly, truly life-changing. And I say that because this month has been life-changing for me. There have been lots of energetic patterns that have come up for me that I did not expect to have to work through. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to shift things in my own personal life and the lives of my loved ones. I mean, April has been really, really um, energetically life-changing for many of the loved ones and clients that I've worked uh, with this month too. So don't miss out on that energetic opportunity and make sure that you are truly working through whatever it is that's your priority. So with that, everybody, have a great rest of your night and universal blessings.